Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the Ubiports Foundation's show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 96, streamed live on March 13th, 2021. Yes, I had to look that up really quickly. Uh, <laughs> my name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Alfred. Hello, everyone. And Florian. Hello, hello. Send love to Marius going in for an emergency shift. Everyone, please, please. Praise Marius. Praise Marius. Uh, geez, I don't have much to, to kick off with this week. Uh, we've got a great roundup of feedback and news to get to today. But let me start with this. If you're interested in what we're talking about today, you want to know if your device is supported by Ubuntu Touch, head over to devices.ubuntu-touch.io. If your device is not on the list, it's going to need a custom image made for it. Go to the porting documentation at docs.ubports.com slash porting to learn more about that process. We're going to talk a little bit more about that documentation later in the show. <sighs> Let's start off with the feedback this week. And the first one that came in is from Richard. FX Tech announced that a team of developers received the specs to work on the operation op operating system for the FX Tech Pro One X. They say it'll take UbiPorts two months to port to the Snapdragon 622 device. They estimate that they'll be ready for porting in April, but with the UbiPorts core team being busy, it might be difficult to achieve a stable Ubuntu Touch release for the delivery milestone. My question is what kind of relationship there is between FX Tech and the UbiPorts Foundation. Did they make a contribution to the foundation in exchange for porting effort? And is it a model similar to the relationship with Pine64? Okay, great. So I, I can take this one as a member of the of the board and the core organization and <clears throat> good relations to our business um, responsibles. Um, so we have two things uh, in general for, for those projects in place. The one thing is if a project wants to sell uh, devices um, with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed, uh, they would need to make a licensing agreement with Canonical, actually, because it's all about Ubuntu, right? So if you want to have Ubuntu Touch on the device, if you want to have a logo on the box whatsoever, you would need to license certain stuff from Canonical. And to make this easier, we um, managed to get a licensing agreement between Canonical and us, the UbiBots Foundation, that basically says, okay, if the UbiBots Foundation makes an agreement with a partner project, for that purpose, and it's only for Ubuntu Touch and only for this and for that, then we can real or sub-license that to the project. So that's one thing. We don't charge anything for that. Uh, it's also not mandatory to do any donations for that. You just ask for this license and we decide if we want to give this or not. Right? The second thing is that uh, projects can make um, a sponsorship agreement with us. So they can say, okay, we want to sponsor the uh, UbiWorks Foundation and the project. We want to uh, donate some money into the foundation. And they can do this basically as a one-time payment if they like. Or we had also cases where we had a certain share of, uh, of money per device that has been sold. So for example, that was uh, going on with the Pine phone. Um, that uh, it was different. It was it was a package deal with with uh, Wallaphone and so on. Um, with FX Tech at the moment, I don't know the the real details for that part. Um, I can just say that we are working on the licensing agreement, and uh, so that it will be possible for them to actually put a, a factory image on the devices and and uh, bring them to the people that that order it with that option. Yeah. Um, so uh, the porting also to talk about the porting effort. Um, currently, the, at the current moment, um, the porting effort for us is not that big. So um, while we didn't receive a donation for the porting effort so far, um, we also don't work on the FX tech all the time uh, or in, at, at our, in, as, a, as a main part of our porting efforts. There are, there are some things being done, that's right. Um, but we focus on other things that are much more important at the moment. That's also why there is this disclaimer that the core team is being busy with other things, meaning 24 upgrade, uh, bringing out OTAs and all the things that we talked about on the last Q&As already. Uh, we will try to support whenever we can with all the knowledge that we have and also trying to get, if possible, um, hands on if it's really needed. However, there is one big thing to say about the device and um, that's 
that two months that being talked about here is a very theoretical thing and it was based actually on the assumption that this would be an android 9 or maybe 10 port if the sd662 uh, soc is basically um, android 11 base where we would need Helium 11 then this time um, might get longer actually because we don't have anything in place for for Helium 11 that we can just say okay it worked for that device already we can just uh, try to do the similar stuff uh, on this mm -hmm. one yeah that's basically it um so yeah. we are in we're in exchange with uh, with them we we try to get first of all the licensing agreement done uh, that's basically just signing of papers and then let's see if there is any sponsorship deal on top of that but it's not mandatory for us yeah. mm -hmm. yep and to be fair they are like they have a team working on it yeah um on the, it's not they, like they just, they, have they didn't hand it to us and say, here you go. It's yeah. they are working on it. No, we are totally excited. We want to support it, but uh, we cannot really spare now really porting uh, people to that. We we could also say we, we connect somebody from the community to help with that. That's also appreciated. But uh, for the core team, if possible, we try to focus on the things that we need to do until beginning of uh, until until end of half uh, first half of the year. Uh, because yeah. that's on a higher priority. Yeah. So that was how the interesting wording happened. Yeah. Let's move on. All right. Um, Dom UBP KM asks uh, more CPU acceleration on or GPU acceleration probably rather uh, on Android nine devices. Is it for OTA seventeen? Uh, seeing regularly uh, jerky or chops groaning in web pages on the wall of phone questions me. Uh. There are issues, I think we talked about this last time, there are more issues with GPU accelerated web browser that are common to all Ubuntu Touch devices, including the Pine phone. Um, which luckily means that the issue isn't like Hybris, uh, but unluckily it means that the issue is deeper. Um, mm. So yeah, I, I don't know if that'll be ready for OTA 17. We need a lot more help testing and work on it. I mean, there are some devices where it works, like the Volophone. Um, it seems to work fine. Maybe we'll be able to enable it for some devices, but not others. We'll see about that. But um, yeah, Pine Phone, Android 5, Android 7 devices, and only some of them have issues. And the issue is like one block of the screen that's like 128 by 128 pixels gets frozen and the rest is fine. It's just ugh. So maybe we can uh, get it running for some devices, but not others. Florian. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally listening to your to the explanatory voice. It's perfect. Dad and the life wants to know. Mir Wayland, Lomiri Hall, uh, Halium Hall, Hill, Leap Hybris, Nuncium. Yes, you name it. It might be just me, but uh, despite your laudable and countless efforts to explain them, my head still spins every time these terms come up. Are there by any chance already architecture diagrams available that explain these components and their interaction? If not, you might consider creating them. Not only to quench the first of curious laymen like me, but also to lower the entry threshold for new developers. That's a really good statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah. Um, my, maybe Dalton, you are our head of tech here in this round. <laughs> <laughs> head of technology. Don't use those terms with me. Uh, <laughs> you know what will happen. The, uh, there are some architecture diagrams floating around and remade ones that were made off of the canonical ones back in the day. But the problem is that these graphics, uh, aren't quite correct. And part of the problem is that someone who knows about these things kind of needs to create the graphics, but then that person who knows about the things also needs to know a bit of graphic design or how to diagram, and I certainly don't. <laughs> uh, that's been one problem with it. I understand that there are lots of thing, lots of there's lots of jargon that we use, especially on this show, that we don't do a good job of explaining. And there have been uh, discussions in the past, like, should we do some shows where they're, like, uh, very technical and some which aren't? Or how could we even structure that um, to try and avoid the problem? Uh, we certainly try to explain things as they come up during the show. 
But, you know, sometimes it's either Marius or Florian or Alfred are talking a thousand miles a minute. And I'm just trying to go back behind them and explain what the heck they're saying. <laughs> and I understand it's not a very good listening experience. Um, but that's it, it's the line that we try to straddle with this show where it's supposed to be, you know, for anyone in the community who's interested in listening to it. You know, it's for people who are technical and people who aren't. Um, it's a difficult line to straddle. But we'll try. There, yeah, there, there were some linked in some diagrams linked in that thread. Maybe we can work on getting them uh, imported into our documentation. Um, but well, we just have to see about that. Rick had a question this week Is there any update or clarification on the work remaining for browser audio playback in the background? I think previously it was mentioned that this was going to need Content Hub or Media Hub development. Again, are there any updates on it? Well, uh, for Chromium to actually, or for the cute web engine that we're using to actually be able to play back audio in the background, it would need some integration into Media Hub, the component that is basically responsible for playing back audio and, audio and video uh, content on the phone uh, or the tablet and does it in the background without uh, causing your CPU usage to go up and eating up all the battery that you have. Um, the problem is this integration might be harder to do uh, than we would like it to be. Um, so the problem is with every Chrome update, things change or can change dramatically um, on Google's end, and it would require us to play, you know, catch up with them, play it. It's a little cat and mouse game there um, to actually make it possible to keep the functionality in there without a lot of work behind it. So um, it's the same thing with um, getting um, video to work in the browser, like your webcam or your integrated uh, camera uh, to work in the web browser. Um, for that specifically, there is a way to do it outside of Chromium so that it acts as a video uh, for Linux device, but uh, playback audio playback specifically might need some tighter integration and it's 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 harder to do than we would like to like mm -hmm. it to be and i mean maybe someday we'll just give up and uh use like chromium's mpre2 implementation to just say okay chromium's playing something do whatever browser which would kind yeah. of suck but it might just be what we end up doing in the end so no it would it's still in the exploratory phase rick um, we'll see what happens in, in the future. Ah, thank you for reminding me, Vince. I forgot to say this at the top of the show before we start the questions. We take these questions from our forum at forums.ubports.com, and that's how you get first in line to for, for your questions to be answered. We do read them all. We don't always answer them all, um, but we might also kick them for another show in the future after we have a better answer for you. Rick had a second question this week. What is the best quality or newest device for about 150 US dollars that has the best Ubuntu Touch compatibility? I know about the great new devices page, but I was wondering what devices we would go for. Hmm. Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Okay, um, so my personal choices are because I am using <laughs> them on a daily basis, it's basically the Xperia X and the Pixel 3a because um, I use them. I uh, I know that they're rather, uh, they have a long life ahead of them. It's not like we're going to drop support for them anytime soon. Hmm. Uh, and they are tested. They are used by a lot of people. Uh, at least the Xperia X is. Um, not sure about the Pixel 3a, but that, that one is, for example, the the Xperia X, and it's a nice it's a nice five inch phone. I mean, it all depends on what you personally need. And you can get it in a mint condition. Actually, that's also something yeah. that uh, people are selling these as new or still with original box. Or I don't know if if, if there are some uh, uh, retailers still having that on stock. Um, I don't know the Sony situation, but uh, yeah. For some people, it might be uh, important to get a device that has not much usage before because yeah. 
things can go wrong with second hand devices we know yeah. mm. because everyone's gluing their batteries in yeah yeah <laughs> I'm not mad about that or anything. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you can also get uh, the the, line, the Pixel line of phones is is really good in my opinion, despite that it has some weird software issues from Google that, of course, we need to clear up in our ports. Which is hilarious, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, also here, for example, um, I have on my table a Pixel and a Pixel 2. They are about to to get some progress. I have already um, some test port, uh, some test users that were looking into this. We have still some weird issues, but in general, um, the question is really: if 150 bucks is something you want to spend on a new device or a used one, that will make a great difference, of course. And devices that you're going to look for should maybe um, be on an Android 9 level or so. Um, or able to to run an Android 9 port because that's where we m try to move everything more or less. Not too old from the Android base, and yeah, I don't know. That would be my thing. from from the range that I'm looking at. I'm, I'm with Alfred. I would currently go for uh, one of the Pixel series. I will probably try to to daily drive Pixel when it's there or Pixel 3. Also, OnePlus 5 is a great device. It's on my table now. It's a little bit from hell, but um, we will get there. Yeah, OnePlus 5, OnePlus 5T. I don't know the progress of OnePlus 6. Um, that could also be promising, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so little anecdote before the show. <laughs> um, about an hour before the show, I sent Florian the link so that he could join the video call. And he sent back, uh, hey, I'm working on the updater, and I've got this file and this file, and how do I run them together? I was like, Florian, we have a show to do. <laughs> 30 minutes later, <laughs> he sends again, okay, I can do it if I call if I call the updater this way with this file, then it works. It's like, Florian, we have a show to do. <laughs> I was busy some minutes before the show still trying to get this thing into system upgrade mode, and no, it broke again. I gave up for the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, as I said, we are getting there. So um, I think... Um, you have to trust a little bit your senses and what you expect from a device. But if you want something like the N5 and then the Nexus 5 that you mentioned, yes, it's getting a bit old. Also, you shouldn't go for a device that doesn't have um, 4G anymore. That would be ridiculous today because people are, or, or providers or carriers are switching off 3G in some regions, maybe even 2G, I don't know. So you need at least uh, 4G support for the long run. And yeah, um, I don't know. It's about form factor or size. Um, for example, the OnePlus uh, 5 is a very tall device. Um, it's a little bit too too small for my big hands. Yeah, So hands. Yeah, But <laughs> on the other hand, if you look on the Nexus 6B, it's huge. Yeah, So you probably don't want to have that in your pocket all the time like <laughs> me. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, lots of decisions to make. Yeah, it's but... not easy to recommend go get this. Uh, I wouldn't go for, for a single recommendation these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are saying stuff like the Nexus 5. The Nexus 5 is really showing its age, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that one lasting much longer. Not necessarily just our port, but all the hardware itself, because mm. like mine, I think the flash is dying on it. The flash storage. Uh, I don't know about that one anymore. Yeah. I mean, you can True. certainly get it for cheap. If you can get it for really cheap, like $50 or less, maybe it's okay. But on the other hand, I just got a Pixel 1 for $50. So, mm. like, now for example, value? If you, yeah, if you compare the size here between uh, the Nexus 5 and the, the Pixel 1, they are Maybe almost we the same. get off of this. Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, that's really, a, it, it's, it's a progress in, in terms of the, of the hardware, also of the capabilities of the, of the CPU. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. nice that those devices, we could carry them for such a long time. But I get it that certain workloads on the mobile device are now feeling little bit sluggish on the old devices yeah yeah and i made really a wow the first time that i ran it on a more modern device with how snappy it can be yeah 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 we know this we know this so yeah let's go on for the next one mm -hmm. dave any progress on the cameras my xperia x goes from working to not working to half screen half green screen from one update to the next ay, 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 ay. the flash and zoom have never worked the PinePhone camera doesn't seem to work at all. 
Oh, I can Ooh, jump guys. in with the Pine Phone camera. Please. Um, if get off the kernel upgrade branch on your Pine Phone, uh, it works in stable RC Devil, and in RC and Devil, the viewfinder works faster. There's no video recording, but it can take stills. Um, that is, yeah, it's it's an interesting camera. It's an interesting device. Um, stay tuned for more on that one. I don't have more of an answer than that right now, but it doesn't work at all on the kernel upgrade branch. So if you're on that and you want to use the camera, that's not where to be. Use Devil or RC. Yeah, for the uh, Xperia X, um, it seems to be uh, a little bit of a timing issue um, with initializing the camera. So uh, it doesn't happen on every, as you might have noticed, it doesn't have issues on every startup of the camera app. Um, sometimes you need a reboot. Sometimes uh, it's enough to switch the resolution back and forth uh, between resolutions. And uh, it seems to be some kind of race condition in there that uh, basically uh, makes the camera experience unfortunately harder than it than it needs to be. And uh, I I have looked into it a little bit. The problem is it's a harder task than I want it to be. Again, um, so if anybody out there is uh, willing to help out on this, it would I would I would be very happy about it. Would be very appreciated. Um, but currently, it looks like some kind of timing issue where initializing things in in different orders causes the green screen to appear or causes it to not work at all. Um, again. Opening the spread, changing the resolution of the camera might fix it. And if not, a reboot almost certainly does. So, um, yeah, that's about it for the Xperia X. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I live with that too. So it kind of sucks, but yeah. yeah, I like the device too much otherwise. Okay, um, Cliff had a question. I see there have been more uh, some recent updates to the camera application. Does this mean that the app has a new maintainer who will be tackling the outstanding problems? Unfortunately not. Um, we got... Um, there were some updates that had to be done for OTA 16 to release, period. Um, so we got Rodney in as a maintainer of that group. Um but no, he's not the official maintainer of the app or anything. Uh, so we still need help with that. We still need someone who wants to look at the camera app and fix its outstanding issues. Because um, no, we don't have an official maintainer yet. But we did get that update out, which is good. All right. Uh, Y'all see if you want to take any questions from live chat while I... Thank the people who make this whole thing possible. I'd like to give a shout out to our uh, platinum level sponsors, including Smooze, Vala, Pine64, and Private Internet Access. You're all sponsoring the UbiPorts Foundation and making it possible for us to do things like, I don't know, have a show every couple weeks, make a bone to touch, have some servers to host it. You know, the little things. The, the little things. <laughs> I'd also like to thank our community sponsors, including Travis Mackmer, Amalith, Ruskagnerez, Instancefell, Dan Trevino, Daniel, oh no, Daniel Franczak, Robin Hood, Laszlo Tomas, Ian Locke, Max Fielder, A. Thiel, Casey Lambie, George Toma, Renan Mirkalev, Will Atwood, and Scott Marley. If you'd like to join them and have me mispronounce your name too, you can head over to patreon.com slash uports and pick the community sponsor level. Or if you'd like to donate to the uports foundation in other ways, it is tax deductible in some jurisdictions. Uh, you can find us at uports.com slash donate. And again, it, it's a huge thank you to all of you, to all of the companies sponsoring us, to all the people sponsoring us, to all the people donating. Thank you so much. You're making it possible for us to well, make it possible for me to work on this full time, and it's I can't imagine myself doing anything else. So, thanks again. ubports.com slash donate if you want to join those people, or if you're just someone who's in the community, if you're a translator, if you're a developer, if you're um, just helping people out in 
community chats. If you're Lionel taking notes on these right now, you know, thank you to all of you. Um, it is just a huge help to have all of you around. It's really nice to have such a supportive community. Yeah, thanks also from my side. It's really, really nice that we can continue working on that, what we what we love for the last uh, four or five years already and mm -hmm. um, bring more and more value into it and see Did the Did any of you grow. see any questions that you wanted to answer now while we're here? Uh, there was a quick one, just why we don't uh, port Firefox um, instead of making oh, all yeah, this quick effort one. with Qt Web Engine. Um, wouldn't it be better? Vincent yeah. asked, what's the idea behind this morph browser thing? Wouldn't it be better if someone ported Firefox mobile to Linux to Ubuntu Touch? Well, Maybe. I that's hard to say. Um, hmm. If a hypothetical would be better. It's certainly not easy um, to integrate uh, Servo or Gecko into another uh, graphical front end like it is with Qt Web Engine or Chromium. Uh, it seems like it's not something that the Gecko or Servo team, like, I, I know they're interested in it, but it's just not something they can dedicate a lot of time to, unlike the Chromium team. So um, it's not like we can just use the Android app because it's a Kotlin and Java-based front end for Gecko and Servo. Um, and Firefox desktop is all right, but not always optimized for small screens. The idea behind Morph Browser is that we don't have to maintain the rendering engine or anything. We just have to maintain the um, presentation layer that shows you the web rendering engine, which is much easier. And then we can make it accept and work correctly for the, um, the platforms. I forget what it's called. Design, for lack of a better word. No, it looks right. It acts right with the rest of the platform. Whereas it might not be the same thing with a Firefox mobile unless we completely reskinned it. Yeah. There's also the uh, someone in the chat saying that on Selfish OS, there is uh, Firefox being used. And that is true but it's stuck on an older version of Firefox and um, we don't get the benefit of having it upgraded by someone else uh, as we're having with the Qt web engine that is basically maintained and released by the Qt company uh, on a regular basis. And so that we would not have to worry about, as Dalton said, the rendering en engine, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Rodney's right here. Using Firefox wouldn't really solve any of the issues that we have with Morph. You know, if you have a specific problem, question, or concern with Morph, head over to its issue tracker over on github.com slash ubports slash morph dash browser. Um, let us know if you're having trouble with it and if we can try and make it better. Um, we had the same discussion, you know, five, five, four, four years ago now with, are you going to switch off of Mir? It's like, well... Replacing it doesn't exactly fix the problems that we're having. It just creates new ones. Apparently versions are now unstuck for Firefox on Sailfish. Mm, might be interesting to look into that if someone is interested in that, in that case. I mean, go for it. Yeah. But it's not like we want... We really don't want to rewrite more browser on top of Firefox. But, you know. All, All right. right. Any other questions see that you see? No, that's about okay. it from Let's keep from here. going. All right. Let's get into the news this week. And, oh man, <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Uh, Ubuntu Touch OTA 16 is set for release on Monday. Ooh, it's here. Monday. We finally upgraded our Qt from 5.9.5 to 5.12.9. This work has been ongoing since July. Thank you, Rodney. There are over 300 binary packages that have changed in this release. It is huge. It's... <sighs> Update your QP2. Stop it. Uh... 
I don't know. I'm just really happy with how it's gone, how it's turned out. It's much easier than last time we updated Qt. We hit a lot of the same problems, but we have a much better team around us now um, to help with all of this. So it was just, it was a much better experience since we had more people looking at the problems. But that's not all. Even though that is a huge part of the release, there were also fixes in Morph Browser from uh, Kugi, Chris, and Daniel Kuka. Like a new recent downloads pane that appears when you download things in the current browsing session. It's much easier to use in tablet or desktop mode since the tabs are now taller and easier to hit. There's a reopen tab button on the new tab on the tab management screen, uh, which you could always do with the keyboard, but phones don't have keyboard. Uh, <laughs> and custom user agents are back. If you really want to use a custom user agent for a different site, you can configure that in Morph browser in the uh, domain settings. Xperia, the fixes to the Xperia X are my favorite, Alfred. <laughs> it's got better battery life, better stability, and video recording works both on it and the OnePlus 3 and 3T. I tried to ask other porters about it, but I didn't get an answer. Oh yeah, Florian. <laughs> Not in this release, but uh, you got the Nexus 6P working for next one? Yeah, basically camera is now nice. The only uh, thing missing is now the fingerprint reader and the selfie cam takes pictures with minus 90 degrees rotation for no reason. But um, other than that, I must say, well, quite finished with that one now. Nice. Um, yeah. This one's going to be a little sad and it's going to be a little painful for a little bit, I think. But the Oxide web rendering engine has been removed in this release. So, I mean, we've been talking about it for two years. Um, True. Actually, for four years. We were talking about it before um, Ubuntu Touch OTA 16 was released, but that's when it really became a problem because Oxide started crashing and viewing pings wrong and stuff. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, it's gone with this release. We did... Do I want to announce this? Yeah. Um... We built it. So, like, if you really want to include it in your click package, you could. Please don't. But if it's an emergency and you really need to, it is there. Um, we'd rather help you get the things broken with Oxide working under Cute Web Engine. So, you know, contact us at Ubuntu App Dev EN on Telegram. Uh, let's help you get your app onto Cute Web Engine from Oxide because it's been long enough now. The Anbox installer is now included by default. So on the OnePlus One, Nexus 5, and Fairphone 2, you can install Anbox without modifying the device at all. On other supported devices like the Meiju Pro 5 and the BQM10 tablets, uh, you still need to install a custom boot image. Yeah, it's unfortunate. We will get there. But you got to do it. Oh, and uh, Florian snuck in a new device, the Samsung Galaxy S3 Neo Plus. That's a mouthful. Specifically, the GT i9-301i. Not the GT9-301. That one's wrong. <laughs> it's ridiculous how Samsung does subversions of the same version of device with the same code name, and that subversion wouldn't boot. So please believe the installer when the installer double confirms with you that you have the right device and you don't have it. Don't be disappointed. We had already two cases uh, and questions in the community about it. Um, it won't boot, yeah, because it's the wrong model. I have to see how we can work around this because honestly, if it's the same code name, I will have a very hard time to deliver two images for it. I don't know what Android does different, but yeah, it's somehow strange. Anyways, it's... Um, um, a really nice retro device with a physical button in the middle on the bottom. And uh, people that got it to run say, well, it's a little bit slow on some occasions, but still very usable. And uh, it's our reference port now for the very aging Halium 5.1. And I try to keep it a little bit maintained because it's just fun. <laughs> Not Samsung much to say about this. S3 Neo Plus. Yes. God. Actually, the nerve of some sign. people. 
I will just correct it here in the show notes. It's written like that. Note. I know, but I was going to read it wrong if I put the plus sign instead of the word. <laughs> okay. So that's it for, for that grandfather. But yeah, <laughs> grandfather's watch device. But that is officially now in the UB Ports installer available yes. for install. The porting documentation, speaking of porting, is getting an excellent upgrade. Thank you, Ari. Holium 9.0 GSI documentation that is an out-of-tree kernel build is coming. Ari wanted to let everyone know that some of the information in this new documentation was taken from the Porting Notes wiki. Thank you to everyone who contributed to the Porting Notes wiki over the past few months. Uh, it's been a huge help. He hopes that no one will have problems with their work being used, reused, and modified. Um, it can't be used exactly as it is because it needs to flow a little bit better than it does in the Porting Notes wiki. But he did have a question. Is there anyone with a great knowledge of the porting process who would be willing to assist? Uh, you know, Alfred and Nikita have been helping him out. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you, Nikita. Not here. No, you're watching. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'd be happy to do the information gathering, but I need help to ask the right questions, and someone would need to look through the responses and help draw conclusions for the actual documentation. Um, yeah, I've been looking over at this Moto X4 and being like, well, it runs Android 9, but it's not all that interesting a device. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't try it. I don't know. Um... But yeah, this is new documentation to help you run Ubuntu Touch on devices which run Android 9. It's been missing for a little while, but it's finally almost here. And I've been looking at the work in progress stuff. Ari has a knack for this. <laughs> I mean, I'm a bit of a fanatic about documentation. You may know, but I read it. And it's just hmm, chef's kiss. Perfect. Good. <laughs> So, maybe before the next time we speak, there will be some uh, documentation already released. We'll have to see. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Alfred thank you. and Nikita, for helping. Alfred, I hear you've been doing some stuff with your apps this week. Right. Um, so, as some of you might know, uh, I'm working on... Uh, client for next cloud no cloud called ghost cloud and it's a native uh, application written in c++ with qml um it's the last time we talked about it is probably like a year ago or something like that so just a little information that it gained uh, downloads uh, in the background using the download manager in the version 096 which which is something that i have been looking forward to for a long time i just didn't have the time until i did have the time to do it and it's it's been in there for like three months or so. Um, and this week I released a new version, OS 9.8, uh, which also includes the capability to get the, the account information not from a local database as it used to do, but from the system settings um, page. So when you go to system settings, you add an online account there uh, and enable the application uh, called Ghost Cloud, then you can access the account and uh, browse through your uh, Nextcloud or OwnCloud instance very easily without having to create another account or p app password in the, in the settings UI. It's all integrated into the OS now. Um, and there are further fixes uh, queued up already. So Kugi has been very uh, helpful in this. He did a fix for the dark modes so that it would oh, very, important. very important for a lot very of people important. very important and uh he also fixed uh the add new account button to point to the right uh, settings page when the settings application is already open in the background um wow. when it's not open in the background it would easily open it already but uh it didn't when it was already in the background so he fixed that and my idea is to possibly uh, release it until the next Q&A. And um, 
For that, I'm planning for the 1.0 uh, release, I'm planning to add the functionality of uh, sharing public links so that you can actually share links to your uh, files and directories from within the application. And also something that might not make it into 1.0, but I certainly would hope uh, to make use of this is the camera roll backups uh, also in the background. So currently you have to back up things manually by hand, but in the future, maybe it's going to be possible to add the background backup service uh, and uh, have your photos backed up automatically uh, to your next cloud or own cloud instance. Um, I see some people uh, might be excited about this. I'm not sure. Just a little. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's it's at least uh, on the roadmap for 1.0. The the code is almost ready. It's just needing the integration into uh, the operating system itself. So, um, yeah, that's that's about it for uh, the Ghost Cloud endeavors. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Fuse Team asks, can it make use of the download manager indicator? Didn't you just? Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it does. Does. Yeah, it, for for downloads, it's using the the download manager now uh, since 096. There you go. Number. You're yeah. welcome, Fuse team. <laughs> the feature was there before you asked for it. Isn't that great? <laughs> I hear that you've been doing some stuff with the App Armor team, which I found very interesting. Right. Um, so Marius and I were talking a little bit about uh, the security story of Ubuntu Touch and um, something that has been talked about very early in the development of Ubuntu Touch when it was still a thing of Canonical um, was um, access control for binders. So again, something a little more technical, um, just as, as a little recap, binder is used on Android phones. Uh, for two processes to communicate with each other, or two or more processes. And um, Binder currently is not um, is not uh, mediated through App Armor, which means we can't just uh, block applications from accessing Binder applications. Um, so the, the current state of affairs is Android does a lot of Binder in, inside of it itself, in, inside of the container. And we have a few applications outside of Android talking to it. And would it, wouldn't it be nice to have some kind of policies there to um, make it possible to block random applications from accessing Android specific functionality that it should not have as a security feature? And I, both Marius and I were talking to the upstream App Armor developers, and they already had something. Uh, like that in mind. It's still very early, early, very early in development. So um, the code that has been released doesn't compile yet. I have to take a look into that, make it compile first. Um, so just a disclaimer, it's not finished by any by any means, but um, it's probably getting there. And um, it's also got uh, upstream developers behind it. So it's not only us doing the work, but uh, upstream as well. And uh, the first development target, because it's very easy to do on that phone, is the Xperia X with the mainline kernel, uh, because we need something that is more recent, that has support for a newer kernel version, like uh, 5.11 or 5.12. And I'm just waiting for 5.12 to uh, get out of the, uh, get get released, uh, so that I oven. can work, come out of the oven, right? Is that, no. Uh, is that right? I don't know. I'm the only American here, and I don't, I don't have it right. <laughs> well, uh, so um, yeah, uh, the idea is basically to work on the new kernel first, make it work upstream, and as soon as it's merged upstream, we can then pull down the patches to an older uh, kernel version, uh, like 4.9, for example, like on the Pixel 3a, um, for example. And that would allow us to set policies uh, in the uh, app armor policy groups that we have, our permission system basically, uh, to block applications from accessing services that they're not supposed to access. Um, it's probably going to take a very long time, but 
I'm very hopeful that it will work out uh, in at least in the long run. Definitely. Excellent. Well, I figured that maybe we could finish up today talking about more future things, not only just app armor security or plans for ghost cloud or even OTA 16 and 17, but the road to Ubuntu 2004. Um, this, yeah, there's been a lot of work going on in the background about this. Obviously we don't have images of Ubuntu touch on Ubuntu 2004 out yet. Ubuntu Touch is currently based on Ubuntu 16.04, which, yes, we know, is going out of support next month. Which is why we have been and are working on moving Ubuntu Touch to Ubuntu 20.04. There were some big milestones hit this week that I want to talk about. There's, the road, obvious right now, is to build and run Lomiri on Metal on an Android device. The milestones we hit this week were from Rachanan. He got Lomiri UI Toolkit built and the Lomiri UI Toolkit gallery ran on Ubuntu 20.04 on an Xperia X. Uh, he's currently working on fixing Lomiri app launches tests, which is how uh, Lomiri tells the system, please launch this application for me, manage it for me. It does process grouping so that all of a pro all of an app gets frozen when it's in the background and all of an app gets killed when it comes time for that he's been merging a lot of fixes that were made while cute mirror was packaged into debian and there were a lot of them and his next target is building system settings which depends on thumbnailer so that's where he started basically what we're doing is we're going down this dependency tree and saying all right, we want Lomiri. What do we have to do to make that happen? All right, Lomiri UI Toolkit, all of its dependencies. Uh, system settings, all of its dependencies. I actually think he said yesterday, actually I know he said yesterday, that he got Thumbnailer renamed to Lomiri Thumbnailer so that it can be packaged for Debian or other distributions. And it builds. So even these notes are a little bit out of date. That's how quickly this work is going. <laughs> Rodney is doing a similar thing. We got to get Lomiri running, but he started at a different point in the list, basically. First was lib user metrics, which allows apps to submit numerical data that can be displayed on the stats circle on the lock screen. That depended on Click, the packaging format that Ubuntu Touch apps are built with. So it was obviously time to build Click, right? No. Uh... <laughs> Click depends on package kit plugins, and package kit plugins no longer exist. With package kit being a way that multiple different uh, package managers, Snap, Apt, Flatpak, uh, can be managed from one interface, like G GNOME software. Its plugins are gone. <laughs> to the jargon segment of the day, that's what I'm doing. Um, its plugins no longer exist. So instead, uh, lib user metrics no longer depends on click, which makes it more packageable in Arch and Debian too. And as a bonus, we got Cyborium building on Focal. Cyborium being the SD card manager, which is written in Go. <laughs> because why not? All right, jargon segment, I suppose, is over, but... You know, that is the work that's been going on in the past two weeks. That is literally the, I read that from our meeting notes for the past two weeks. Um, so things are going quickly. And I just have to say, you know, I feel better than I ever have about this project. <laughs> you know, we've got a lot of people. I mean, you only see a tiny fraction of the people who work on Ubuntu Touch on this show ever um because some of them don't like cameras but also because time zones don't match up so being able to present this work and i mean even being able to say like you know marius didn't do this or i didn't do this or alfred didn't do this or florian didn't do this in itself is 
just it's so nice to have you know we have a great team backing up the project now i just you know this week i was thinking i haven't stressed out about this for like a long time i know some people will say you shouldn't stress out about it at all it's not life or death it's a bunch of touch but you know it is what it is it's just i can't it, it's difficult for me to express how proud I am of the work that this team and this community is doing. Um, or all the people, I mean, even seeing in the welcome group where people say, hey, I'm having trouble installing a bunch of touch. And usually within 20 minutes, someone's there to help them. I, it makes me pretty happy. <laughs> so again, thank you to everyone who's contributing to Ubuntu Touch. Thank you, of course, to the team contracted by the UB Forts Foundation to work on Ubuntu Touch. I can't tell you thank you enough. Um, thank you to all of our volunteers. Just thank you. Thank Good you to Open for your efforts also. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. You're gluing it together when things try to fall apart and keep everything in place in the development zone. That's a very tough job sometimes. You're all over yeah. GitHub. But wait, let's some... not make this about me. Yeah. yeah. No, but still, I mean, uh, you're doing. Dalton's a... getting sentimental, says Dave.tv. I don't know. It's like OT16 is here. It was a lot of work. It was hard. You know, it's been three months since the last release, which is long for us. But hmm. uh, last time we had to do a big transition like this, it took six months. And it's just, I'm chuffed to bits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough sentiment, Great. I guess. But just thank you. Anything else that you all want to cover before we finish up? I'm good. It looks all good right. here. With that, thank you everyone for joining us for this Ubuntu Touch q and It's been a lot of fun as always. If you're interested in what we've been talking about and you want to see if your device is supported, head over to devices ubuntu-touch.io there you'll find all of our support devices and instructions on how to install to them along with a list of what works and what doesn't it's a really nice website the redesign not only was it can't get sentimental again but not only was it redesigned but the improvements being made to it after the redesign are just as good as the redesign ah <sighs> so true <laughs> Anyway, uh, if your device isn't on that extremely nice looking list, it's going to need a custom image made for it. You can head over to the porting documentation at docs.ubports.com slash porting to learn more. And that porting documentation is going to get better really soon, too. Ah. Yes. The fun doesn't stop here. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, PixelFed, Mastodon, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Or if you want our news directly in your chat client, you can find it on Telegram or matrix if you want to chat with us you can find us on telegram matrix or on our forum over at forums.ubports.com and links to all these things are down in the description alfred where can people find you throughout the week um if you're interested in my uh daily ramblings about everything basically uh you can follow me on twitter that's uh freddle.me f-r-e-d-l-d-o-t-m-e that's also my website, uh, where I'm hopefully going to blog uh, a little bit more now that I've made a little poll on Twitter asking me to talk about uh, Ubuntu Touch a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do in the future. And yeah, so it's mostly Twitter, my internet site, my website, um, or Telegram with the same name. Please don't spam me and don't, don't spam me with Bitcoin, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Florian, make it quick. Where can people uh, find you throughout the week? Yeah, basically Twitter is the one and only place where I appear randomly now and then. Um, the wonderful Twitter handle at Lanox underscore mage. It's L-N-N-L-A-N-U-X underscore and then mage like a magician. Magical thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. You can find me at Universal Super Box. That's without any E's over on Twitter. Or just find all of us over at at UbiPorts on basically anywhere. 
that'll do it for this time, and we will see you all in the next Ubuntu Touch Q&A. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.